Hello friends, welcome back to my studio, I hope you're well. I've been playing, doing a bit more on the gel plate and I thought I'd show you some of what I've found. I talked about getting some more of the tea bag papers together. Last time I spoke about the tea bags, I was saying that I had them resting on this and I really love the patterns that it made and I'd tested on some tissue paper which I have done and that's this here and while it doesn't look much there I think cutting these up and it has bled through to the other side there's some really lovely colours and some lovely subtlety to those so they'll be great for collage on other pieces I actually had a double layer so it has gone through onto that as well that uh, rose hip gosh it's and it's so sticky it's been really hard to get the bags apart i've got lots of pieces of it it's very very rich and it worked really well in that magnolia painting that is uh, last week's vlog because of that depth of color and like look at that bag i couldn't get it apart because it's just so rich the other thing i was thinking of playing around with is painting with the bag seeing as there's such strength in the color of the rose hips it would be interesting to have a play around with painting as as a like it's a dye so that'll be a bit of fun I'll just turn the camera around and show you the other things that I, I found you'll get a better look at it from another angle. For those of you that are familiar with gel plate printing, you'll know that once you've used the roller, you run the roller out on some paper. This is just some old paper bag, brown paper bags, lunch bag. And yeah, it looks really, really lovely on that and here's another piece here so these will be great to cut out and use as collage papers and the other thing that i ran it out on is some of that paper that i use from kaiser craft and just having another little bit of background to start you off was also i thought will be really nice to use and here I've played around with putting a little bit of stencil. So this was the original paper in the background here. So you're just running, once you've inked up your pad, or it's not ink, it's paint, you clean your roller by running it along the paper. So that's an, another really lovely paper there. And talking of tea bags, the other thing I did was used the tea bags to lift off the ghost print and I'll do a full video there's so much online about gel plate printing but if you would like to see me create mine I'll I'll do a vlog on it for you all look how lovely this is a stencil that I used on the gel plate and then uh, lifted off this ghost print and I think it's just going to be that one not so successful but that one's really lovely too same stencil yeah just another another use for the tea bags and the other thing that it lifted the ghost print off really well was the pattern paper so the dressmaking patterns and I've played around with lifting off the ghost print from the plate with these these patterns and I think I'm really excited by by this I, I just think that's going to look so great torn up and used as as collage so there's a few little tips for you about the sort of things you can be you're not only creating your gel plate but you're creating all this other material that can be used in your paintings and any of your mixed media work and the other thing i've been playing around with in the studio this week is 
a bit more colour swatching. I found these colours, they're on a game that I play in my downtime. And I really liked this, this set of colours. So I've tried to reproduce them and I've written out uh, the little recipe for them, which can be a great way. If you find something like an image, say like, for example, like this, where I just adore this soft peachy pink and the blue. And so I've found in my paint colours, colours that match that. So then I can use this as a reference of how to make that, that colour up. It's been interesting with this image too, that I colour swatched onto here and then added it into my, my colour mixing Bible. And the colours are quite different on the cream background, of course. So that's something to watch. I, I really have realised I shouldn't be using a cream coloured paper as a colour swatching book, but I just really loved the soft colour and the, and the small size of it for this rather than using it as a visual diary. But that's just something to note that your colours, of course, are going to look different on the background that you put it on and also what colours that you place next to them are going to change how they look. Just to be aware of the way colour can change depending on what it's mixed on and what it's next to. The fabulous world <laughs> and rabbit hole of colour. And the other thing that I do showing you the painting swatches is print out on of artists work that I particularly like and the way I will use this is this is Keely Wynn work, Wynn's work who did the Deck of Dreams workshop. This is some of her beautiful work and what I would like to do because I do paint loose landscapes and I really like these in my visual diary I'm going to reference these to practice loose strokes. Now of course this is Keely's work I won't be trying to copy copy this as my own, just copy it to learn to teach yourself. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with copying artists' work. Obviously you can't go ahead and sell those works as your own original work because they're not, but they're a great reference tool to, well, that's from a cafe in Paris. This is another really lovely artist's work, really lovely abstract work. I'd love to move more into abstract with my still life painting. I really like the wallpaper in this one. And this is to remind me about having the different surfaces and, and just really being loose, I guess. This I thought would make a great reference for a still life. This is an idea of loose floral, abstracting the floral. That's a really lovely, another very loose moving so this is all things to remind me that I can have hanging around me, that I'm, I'm not recreating this as my and calling it my own. It's to remind me that I want to be loose. I could also take colour references off this because I can see that those colours work well. I believe artists should share and encourage each other because it's good for the world and it's good for everybody if great art is being made and if people live creative lives we live happier lives so i'm all for and you can take any of my artworks and do very much the same as as this and it's very much what i was talking about when i showed you this book Joan Eardley's book of the sketch I did of this one. This taught me so much and of course this will never be available for sale because it is a copy. It's not a direct copy but it is a copy but it was about what I learnt about it. I learnt about a colour palette that works I learned about the quick brush stroke. I got so much out of this and then I take this into my next piece that's an original piece. So I encourage you to copy, find what you like. And that was that's the other thing about those artists' work that I have kept or I'm using as reference. 
they're not going to be direct copies but I'm finding out what do I like like for this this work what do I like about that well I was really attracted to the colors I like the looseness of the brush strokes in the flowers and the layering the way that the paint is just laid on top of each other when you're looking at at work look deeper into what is it that attracts you to it is the is it the color is it the brush stroke is it the composition and then develop that into your own work i encourage you copy 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 all your favorite artists masters and fellow contemporary artists and it can really help increase your skill set so i'll leave you with a bit of footage of this coming together for those who have not seen it i hope you have a lovely week see you next time